I'm yeah. excited for this conversation. Man, hey, look, I'm I, super I got my I got my questions ready and uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to have me a therapy session, man. You already know. <laughs> Let's talk about it. When the last time you told somebody keep their head up, cause you concerned about it. Stick and move, we can get it done. Call it unity, it ain't no way around it. Cultivating, we get motivation from the big guy. We don't play about it. Going hard for the game, showing love, bones, not tolerate hate around it. Sticking to keeping it real, we never keep up with the scope. Wanna be more than do more than most. Wanna be more than do more than most. This episode is brought to you by Lucilla's Cleaning Service, where your cleanliness is our business. Now, this company specializes in commercial and residential cleaning. So if you want a free quote, be sure to reach out to their website at www.lucillascleaningservice.com. Hey, my boy be getting, he be going in, bro. He be going in, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, man, we, we just got to give them bits and pieces of the song, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We can't give them the whole thing, you know? <laughs> What's happening, people? Welcome back to Be More to Do More podcast, where we help you become the person you need to become. To do the things you call it, do your boy tone in the building and Henry Allen Harton, the don't, third. Don't forget the <laughs> three. You already know, man. Guess what, bro? Yo. <laughs> well, Yo. Hey, we on the big and better things, man, because yeah. we got a doc, man. Big dog here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, you already know, man. But before we go there, man, let me just introduce her, man. She's a licensed professional. Mm. She's a counsel, no, approved clinical supervisor. Wow. A certified professional counselor supervisor. Mm. And what she do is, uh, we'll just say, combined with her passion for promoting mental health wellness, she utilizes a unique and therapeutic approach to assist professionals and entrepreneurs who are experiencing uh, life challenges and transitions, depressions, anxiety, and grief. Mm-hmm. We Sound have, like we have, let me find that <laughs> applaud button, man. We yeah, have Brentilla Caldwell. <laughs> You already know. You already know. <laughs> okay, okay. You like that? Yes. Oh man. Oh man. Yes. Oh, man. Give me my flowers. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Did yeah. I did I introduce you right? You did. You okay. Did. Cool. Did. Cool. Cool. I'm yeah. excited for this conversation, man. Hey, look. I'm I, super I got excited. my I got my questions ready, and uh, <laughs> I'm trying to have me a therapy session, man. You already know. <laughs> so good night. So Miss 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 Brentia, can you just introduce yourself to the people and just tell them what you do and sure. What your passions are? Uh, yeah, so I'm a licensed professional counselor. I provide therapy services in the Atlanta area. I work with adults. I am actually a former school counselor, so I used to work with children. Mm-hmm. Can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that life is behind me. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, I specialize in working with adults, um, high powered careers, um, black women, right? Entrepreneurs, and then I also help other clinicians get licensed. So that's the supervisor part. Gotcha. So gotcha. Um, gotcha. like emerging clinicians can come see me, right. get supervision hours, and then get fully licensed. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. why do you? Okay. So and maybe uh, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm just all go for it. jumping go for in. It. It's okay. <laughs> I already, I knew he was gonna do this because okay. he was he was psyched up before he said, "Bro, I got so many questions." Yeah, go ahead, bro. Okay. Go ahead. I, mean, I, got, I still got a ton, but like. Why, like, you're giving the game away, it seems like. Oh, sure. Because most people would just... I'm not a gatekeeper, though. Mm. Because whatever is for me is for me. Yeah. I'm not scared of losing clients yeah. or, you know, the more the better. Yeah. Right. You know, the more black faces in our field, the hey, better. Yeah. I know hey. God will bless me regardless. So. Hey, man. I'm That's like, what's yeah. up. That, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I think... Well, so, okay. What What's in you that brought you to that point? Because at the end of the day, right, like... There's not a lot of people that think like that. Yeah. There's not a lot of people that think about I mean, they got they, some people have this crab in the barrel mentality. Yeah. Right. You know, oh, I can't give you too much sauce. Yeah. You know, because I know you're going to try to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what made you? Um, well, I mean, I just had a rough start mm-hmm. as, a, oh, yeah, as a clinician. Yeah, yeah. And I just knew that I would never want to be that to anybody mm-hmm. else. I wanted to be the total opposite. So that's the way I am as a leader at my practice. Um, I try to be as cool of a boss as I can. Yeah, you know, as you can. You know, because you know sometimes you can't always. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and I just try to be a great supervisor. Right. Um, because yeah, we need more black clinicians, more um, uh, effective, efficient clinicians right. in our field. Black right. black faces. So 
like who am I to stop folks from doing that when I know our field needs it? So mm-hmm. right, and I feel I feel like just me being black, I feel more comfortable. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like it's more relatability there, more yeah, familiar, absolutely. familiarity there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would never see a, a non-black there. <laughs> uh, and I grew up around white people. Yeah, like, right, right, right. You know, I'm right. from Colorado, but yeah, I just you just got to get me, and right, if you're not black. You, I mean, you just, you just can't get me. So you don't. Fully. So you don't believe that that somebody should get a different view whenever they're going through mental health things. Um, I think sure, but black people are not a monolith, so you can get a very hold on, perspective. Hold on, hold on. I, ain't, I don't know that <laughs> my doobies out there. I don't know if y'all know what a monolith is. I don't. <laughs> so you got to break that down for right. Me. So black people are all black people are not the same, right? right. Okay, right. You know what I'm saying? So you can get a varied perspective from another black person. Yeah. Right. You know, right? You know, like me. I am a suburban black black woman, right? right? You know, I grew up around white folks. Yeah. I'm a military brat. I have a different perspective than maybe somebody that grew up in Atlanta their whole life, right? Right, right. Um, yeah. You know, so it's just... That's real. Yeah, we're all different. So yeah. you can get a different perspective from another black person. Right, right, yeah. right. I'm really ready to get into it. Okay. No, nah, because you work <laughs> with high-powered uh, female professionals, right? Yeah. Um, and entrepreneurs and things of that nature. Like, what is, like, what is... Matt, okay, are you done introducing yourself? Sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, yeah. I didn't want to be... Because, I, listen, him and I talk, I really don't have any formality because... Yeah. I don't good. I'm more casual here. anyway. Okay, so good, good. the, the yeah. small talk, I, I suck at that. So right. I just really go straight. So when you're dealing with like, what what is one of the big, or uh, some of the biggest challenge, biggest challenges that some of your clients deal with, like when it comes to mental health and in that, in that, in that, to that, in that caliber. Sure. Um, stress, okay. anxiety, um, depression. I know for my uh, like high powered black women, loneliness. Oh. Um, and so the depression that is related to that loneliness um and also grief because of the loneliness because your life relationally looks different from what Mm -hmm. you expected it to look so right like you don't always have the husband or the children and you're like you know approaching 40 or in your 40s or 50s right and it's so grief Uh, because it's that loss of the idea right yeah because once you reach 50 a lot of women are like you know what this is probably going to be my life Mm -hmm. and that's not always true but right that's kind of that grief piece that they're like, man, my life looks different right. from what I thought. Right. So it's like a loss. That's interesting. Is it because our brothers are not stepping up? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about I'm it. Just, <laughs> I just, I just want to know. What, 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 what uh, we need another need podcast. <laughs> <for that. laughs> no, it's it, it's a variety of factors. Okay. Um, and okay. I'm not going to get on here and just say that it is all. Because of y'all. Uh, cool, uh, no. Cool. Uh, it's, now, we'll, we'll get them for you now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a variety of factors, but one of them is a limited dating pool. Okay. Um, black women, we are the least likely to date outside of our race. Oh, And boy. Um, black men are probably one of the more likely. Oh, <laughs> and so man. when we are just zoned in on one population that is zoned in on everybody. Wow. Um, it, just, it just limits us. And then, you know, uh. when we're talking about... Uh, careers, finances. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. It's just like an exponential growth amongst black women right. in comparison to our uh, black male counterparts. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, it's, so it's a variety of factors, but a lot of it is systemic too. Okay. So oh, when we're talking, when, we're, talk about yeah, that. So when we're like, yeah. you know, having racism and capitalism at right. play, you know, it just really makes it hard right. uh, for uh, just high power black women to find Suitable mates. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. So that's that's my passion. Okay. Singlehood, like singlehood. Even though I'm not single, like right. singlehood. Um, I'm a singlehood scholar. So <laughs> yeah. So that is like my thing. Like just talking right. about and reframing what it means to be single because it's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh man. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. People, you meet people and you're like, you tell them you're single. They're like, well, why are you single? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you ask somebody why they married. Right. Like, right. Right. Single, singlehood is just, you know, it's a status. Well, right. Some people, a lot of people choose to be single. Mm, that's true. You know, but that's not how we're socialized. So, again, when we're talking about systems like society systems, we're made to feel right less than, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, yes. when you don't have a mate. Dang. Uh, so do you think that some of these issues or we talk about systemic, right? 
do you think some of these issues are passed down from sure you know what i mean like sure even even in like you mentioned before like how some of our brothers are statistically speaking are focused on like a broader you know focus yeah. when it comes to relationship do you think that's systemic or has been passed down <laughs> um i think a part of it is white supremacy right. um you know the the thought that dating the other mm-hmm. is like an upgrade for you right mm-hmm. right you know so a part of that is systemic i guess okay um but again people have personal choices black women sh- should just choose mm-hmm. to like right. date broader um, yeah, you know, but again, we're socialized to want a black family, right? right. We want chocolate babies, right? We want a black husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, girl, like you can date whoever you want. That's true, right? You right. know, so right. right, yeah. A part of it is systemic. A part of it is just personal choices too. Right, that makes you know. sense. Okay, well, me, I prefer chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> I love chocolate. As, as you, you see, my wife, as you she's should, a, she's a, uh, chocolate. You know, <laughs> <laughs> as you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> What you got, brother? No, uh, so, all right. So, question. Yeah. Do you feel like it's more of a choice for women that that choose to stay single or that are single, or do you feel like they genuinely want to be in relationships? Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh. I think that. <laughs> Look, I, I want to be politically correct. Um, <laughs> I mean, you I can think be real. that it ends up being a choice because of circumstances. Okay. Mm. So after having experienced some challenges yeah. in the dating, mm. it's like you know what? I'm just going to choose to be by myself mm-hmm. or to just wait. And sometimes that waiting, because again, we look at a small pool, mm-hmm. um, you know, turns into long-term singleness mm, right and yeah. so yeah yeah so i guess it's kind of a mixture which is another thing too look i feel like i'm getting on a tangent but <laughs> no, it's another thing too it. that like i work with my clients on is that like just having balance that things can be several things at one time right you know, right, you know what i'm saying right. so yeah I don't even want to <laughs> get started get started <laughs> well okay is it okay i really want to know why you know i'm not single I'm married, yeah. very married, but I just want to know why. Is it okay? Now, bringing the account uh, the accountability back to us, okay. brothers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it okay? Are they not? I'm not saying that they're they're not choosing us, but could it be um, a difference in ambition? Sure, it's a variety of factors. Okay, it's a variety of factors, and again, a part of that I think is systemic, right? So if right. you are like we're cultivating like women who are maybe having to be more independent, right. um, you know, single parent homes or whatnot, uh, crack era in the eighties. Right. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. you're leaving families with the mom, mm-hmm. the mom has to make things shake. And so the daughter sees that, right. Continues that. Yeah, the, the, that. The, yeah, the, yeah. the son sees that and thinks that that's okay. Mm. <laughs> you know? Um, and that, gets us to where we are, right? Right, right. So how do we change that though? Like how do we how do we how do we create I don't like say create a system. I got an but answer for that, man. But right, I, got? I mean I want to hear your answer and then because, I can because I so me, I look at everything as spiritual. Okay. Biblically. You okay. know what I mean? And a lot of fellas are not gonna agree. But I believe it's it's the state of us men, you know. Okay. Um and I think that once we become whole and complete, mm. then we can, because what I find growing up, like, okay, my father was in my life, but my mother's was, she was still a single mother. Okay. But I noticed that yeah, there was some trust issues. Okay. So I don't think my opinion, I don't know what statistics is, or you, you can be a better, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's not a lot of trust when it comes to men, like, like either the the cheating you know and uh, we have to get past that conversation by the way because that's all you hear you don't you know or just really just stepping up and you know um not necessarily saying just being ambitious ambitious but just having our women best interest at heart Mm. you know um or just even our issues within our own self with women you know Mm -hmm. yeah I, i see that 
we are broken in some of those areas, especially from the arguments that I see online. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> oh my God. Like, if yeah. I see one more post <laughs> about dates being 50 50, I'm like, y'all, right. just <laughs> yeah. do what work for you. Like, why, right. why is this a conversation every week? Right, right. <laughs> I so, just can't. Yeah. So that's kind of like what I think. And I'm good that you're here because I get to hash these ideas out <laughs> that I've been having with you so we can kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, so part of what you're saying, sure, is true. I mean, there's a lot of brokenness, right, right, amongst black men, but also black women. Okay, you know okay. what I'm saying? It's a lot of it is systemic, right? You know what I'm saying? And so, how do we beat systems? Right, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. AF. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. so, it's uh, it's really about a lot of reframing. And so that's why when I see podcasts and I mm-hmm. see these men just just talking. I'm like, yeah. just talking. I'm like, yeah, y'all, just like, what, <laughs> what is going on? So we have to do a lot of reframing, which is what therapy yeah. really is. Yes. It's a lot of thought reframing. Right. And so even like with my women clients who I'm trying to like, just empower, like in the midst of their singleness, right? Okay. It's a lot of reframing, like right. being single is not bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to settle. Okay. You know, you want a fulfilling life that doesn't cost you your peace or dignity. That's true. You know, so just reframing. And mm-hmm. so like, yeah, when they're like, they're sad about being single, um, you know, we talk about cultivating other relationships that are present, like friendships, um, you know what I'm saying? Dope. Or right. like even colleagues. I know some folks be like, your coworkers are just your coworkers. Bull but it, crap. But if yeah. you drag yourself yeah. to work. Yeah. Every day, right? You with them more time. Right? Yeah, yep. you you spend more time yep. with them. You want somebody in your corner at That's work. True. That's true. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So cultivating those relationships, cultivating a self relationship. Amen. Like right. even when I was just out there talking about how I hang with myself a lot, mm-hmm. when I tell people like they're like, "What's wrong with you? Girl, what? When you go out to eat by yourself, you ain't gotta wait on nobody. Yeah. <laughs> you throw your clothes on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So right. just even cultivating just those outside relationships, even with the sense. family that you already have. Right. You know, some people don't talk to their siblings. It's mm-hmm. like, let's fix those things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let's try to cultivate deeper connections in all facets of your life. And then who knows? That might put you in a mental, spiritual, physical space to where you can. Right. partner and partner well makes sense you know? makes sense so, do um so have you noticed a lot because you talked about it right like every day is a i don't say every day is a fight but it's a it's just it's systematic and you have to fight to get what you want right do you feel like there's a level of bitterness <laughs> there <laughs> she laughed. yeah okay amongst black women yes yeah okay i'm bitter for them okay yeah you Good know when I, when I hear their stories mm-hmm yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm bitter too. So I feel you. My question is because, like, I think that's a lot of like, and I think especially professional, right? Like, I mean, like, you work really hard to because I see it all the time, right? Where you work really hard to get somewhere, and you know, and but some, and sometimes you're at a place where everything is really not that bad, but you can't you can't make the switch in your head, and you end up taining, you know, your entire team. You taint. Everything around you, it's just your life becomes so toxic. So yeah. right. how does I mean and you seem like a pretty whole person. <laughs> <laughs> but it took work though, right? So how did you get yeah. like I need you to walk? I need let's go back. Let's take it back. Let's, let's take, take it back. back. Let's, let's take, take it back. Let's take it back. You said that you grew up in suburban, you know, yeah. in Colorado. Yeah, military brat. Military brat. Yeah. So moved around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um how did you like what like where did you start it in terms of just your journey of of mental health and kind of being that wholeness, like where were you and how did you get to where you are well, today where you can't go to lunch on yourself or dinner even by yourself and feel happy about it? Um, Probably like mid adulthood. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've kind of always liked being by myself anyways, mm-hmm. um, but just like mid adulthood, you just see that things are just not working. Like right. things aren't clicking the way you want. Um, yeah. And you just start to seek out, just things that make you feel well mm. and not feel good because there's a difference. Oh, mm. okay. Like I can have sex and get turned up, you know, get on that Casamigos, whatever, and I feel good. Right. But things that make you like feel well, it's different. Oh, and so, ooh, man. Bars. 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 <laughs> bars. <laughs> so, yeah, I just started to like figure out things that made me feel well. Yeah. And I just started doing more of it. Right. And then I started enjoying my company more. Right. You know, which sometimes can be counterproductive if you're trying to build relationships. Yeah. Because you're like, man, why I need to do that if I feel good over here? Right. So, again, right. again, talking about balance, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, probably mid-adulthood, 
um, so probably like mid twenties when I really just like zone in on wanting to be a counselor, a therapist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's just been a, I'm gonna say an uphill battle. Cause you know, I be struggling sometimes, <laughs> you know, you know and, I, and I am very um, transparent by clients. Like maybe I don't always be on them good vibes. <laughs> right. Right. I can right. get a little toxic too, you right, know, right. Again, just generational. Yeah. You that's know what I'm true. saying? That's it's true. in me, yeah. right. You know, right. to get a little unique. I, th I think that's the beauty of humanity <laughs> though, because we're, we're not all going to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We're not. And, and I'm not saying that we're not going to be completely whole, but I think that a lot of our, uh, some of our wholeness has to do with community mm. association. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, you may have your toxic moments. I may have my toxic moments, yeah. but if you can understand me and the depth of me and who I am, yeah, then you'll be able to know how to nurture me in that area yeah. and me do you the same, like as well. Right. Yeah. So I think like community has a, a lot to play in that too. And I think we just put too much pressure on ourselves when it comes to that, man. Yeah. 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 And so even with the community piece, I mean, that is a major part of right. wellness. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, is having community. Um, and it makes you a little bit less dependent mm -hmm. on like romantic uh, yeah. relationships. And yeah. so that oh, helps man. to kind of like decrease a little bit of that sadness. I, I just got, yeah, attached you too, to huh? it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if I have friends, right. If I have a, a good career, right. And good relationship with my colleagues and my family, I'm not, like a hundred percent dead set on, Oh my God, where's my man or right, right. where's my girlfriend? Where's my wife? Because I have all of these fulfilling pieces and, I, uh, and it, it doesn't ne necessarily like absolve the want right, for romance. Right, right? Yeah, right. But it just kind of tapers it a little. Cause um, you know, you don't feel as lonely. Right. You don't feel right. as without. Makes sense. You know, Makes which sense. is again, why with my clients, I just encourage them to cultivate relationships. I give them like exercises to right. Like I do this thing called friendship Friday. Like every Friday, you just need to reach out to a friend randomly, mm -hmm. text them, call them, FaceTime them, whatever. Right. Connect and just stay connected. That just helps. Yeah. Connection. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause the truth is a, a lot of my black women clients, they refuse to date outside their race. Even when I brought it up to right. like, they're like, no, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So no. <laughs> the truth is, if it's not going to happen, if you're not going to do that, you are limited. Right. So yeah, you might yeah, as yeah. well cultivate these other aspects of your life because you might not see that end result that you oh, want. Oh, that's yeah. sad, though, man. It, it is. That's it is. Um, and, and my heart hurts for them sometimes because they be distraught. I'm talking about boss women. Right. Six figure and above directors, beautiful, distraught yeah. because they don't have a husband. Man. Maybe some men are intimidated by that too. I mean, partially. Yeah. Partially. Beautiful and, and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's like the, yeah. What have you noticed in that? Because like, obviously, they, they mean, they, they, they have it all, right? Except that one thing. What have you noticed that, that can help? Because you've seen, you've seen people that got, that have, and have came to you and have found a wholeness and end up finding a man, right? And end up getting sure, married. Sure, sure, sure. What do you, what do you kind of, what kind of advice, I guess, would you give to those that, that are that at pace right now? I don't know. Go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Go to therapy. Um, <laughs> like tap into some self interest. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times when I'm working with clients and they're just starting out with me, they don't even know what they like. I don't even know how to ask ask this question. Yeah, I'll, but yeah, I'll, go ahead. Yeah, I'll be like, uh, I was like, you know, so what are your interests? And they'd be like, uh, uh, what, uh, what is that? What is that? Uh, uh, right. You know. And so I think too. Helping like like boss career women just kind of like find themselves like really like wow. zoning on themselves because yeah they they have no idea about themselves sometimes like real and, and these are like really aware women mm -hmm. but they just you know they don't know and so like just getting them to tap into that so like therapy participate identifying and partaking in um, self interest. Um, physical wellness, mm. you know what I'm saying? So like right, eating better, right. exercise and just staying active. Um, and then pr like promoting them to have like a, like an active social life. Makes sense. Um, makes because sense. another thing that uh. I've noticed with clients, my clients is that, uh, um, you know, black women have a challenge with friendships too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, I noticed that too. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if it's, no, if it's just black women. I think it's just, 
I don't know, but yeah. Well, adults, adults yeah. in general, like across races, right. have challenges with friendships, um, particularly making friends as adults. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, I see black women. Yeah, I talk yeah, about yeah, black yeah. women. Yeah. But yeah, um, cultivating friendships that can help them in this stage. Right. And I don't even want to say stage per se, because sometimes singleness is long lasting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, there is a chance if your dating pool is limited and you won't branch out of that, like, you might just be single. Yeah. And mm. so instead of calling it a stage, I guess just, you know, status. Yeah. You know, if you are in single status, you know, like those are some things that you might want to do uh, to just cultivate a fuller life and feel well. Right. Yeah. What, what, I guess, tool or tip that you use that help some of these ladies or bring about or help some of these ladies with self-awareness? Um, so like, it's a bunch of different act, like activities and exercises we do. Um, but really just asking them, one of my favorite things is, and obviously like, you know, with like therapy language, you'd be like, you know, how does that make you feel? Yeah. But I always be like, like, what would it look like if, right? Mm -hmm. you know, or how would you feel if this was the other way, just getting them like, to really like dig deep with questioning okay. and that like helps to raise awareness. Um, and then like, even like in moments, I'd be like, well, like, what are you feeling at this moment? Oh, right. Like, like, what are you thinking in right. this moment? Tell me, I, I can see it in your face a little, but you know, talk to me. And so that just kind of gets them to kind of identify that current space that they're in and just being present, mm -hmm. which helps with awareness. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How does um, therapy help? them in their professional life or you know i, I know we, we talk about dating and yeah. the I'm, I'm assuming that spills over absolutely and so that's like therapy has this like pervasiveness mm -hmm. that is very positively impactful and so when we're talking about like reframing the concept of reframing in therapy i mean you can reframe everywhere you can reframe at work um and when i say reframe that is just um like looking at a situation from a different angle. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And you can do that everywhere. Right. I mean, hell, it helps to probably do it at work. Makes right? sense. You know, Makes because sense. otherwise yeah. you're going to be mad at your boss, your coworkers every day. <laughs> but you be framing like, you know what? They probably having a bad day, you yeah, know, or, yeah. you know, this, this building is stressful. Like this job is stressful. Like I'm not even going to take that personal. Oh man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of reframing. So yeah, like. Oh, so yeah. That, it gets them out of their head. Yeah. Uh, like, makes sense. Yeah. Therapy gives like a lot of tools that are just applicable across the board. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. I, I love therapists, man. Cause like I, I, I went through a situation when I was um, coming up. Right. And before I got to six figures and it was one of those things was like, like, dang, like, how did I not realize or how did I not know that this was this way or whatever? And so I went to therapy. Okay. And, um. I love to hear it. Yeah. And I, and I, I want to see black men in therapy. <laughs> I want to go. Uh, you need to go. Yeah. But I wanted okay. to see, like, am I tripping? Like, like, how did I not, how did I miss this? And, and what I found out, though, is that I wasn't tripping. It was normal. But it made me feel so much better. Okay. Because it was normal. And I went to a black female therapist. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I it's need like, another it's one like going to a, a, a sister or a mama or auntie. Or <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just hash out your, your um, problems. But I wanted to add like what you just said, like, am I tripping? That's actually a great, like self-aware. Right. Uh, exercise to uh, give yourself mm. like therapeutically. Like if you find yourself upset about something mm -hmm. or you're like, you know, like, damn, am I tripping? <laughs> okay. And that's some good self-awareness, like right. to really like reframe, like, you know what, am I really mad or do I feel disappointed? Right. Or right. do I feel saddened by what this person just did or said? So, right. Yeah. That's actually another good therapy tool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As an entrepreneur, I would like to take therapy, right? Okay. What? Okay. How? <laughs> Do it, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> because the stress and mental strife that, of owning your own business is wild and, and the effects are pervasive, like to family life, it does. personal yeah. life, social life. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's really heavy. Yes. So what? OK, besides <laughs> recommending therapy, <laughs> <laughs> what what tip could you give me to manage stress? Because I. I noticed that 
okay, as an entrepreneur, your day is never over. Yeah. It, it, oh, it's yeah. Never. yeah. <laughs> Ain't that wild? You, like, you, you quit a traditional nine to five to work 24 hours a day. Right. Yeah, it's wild, but yeah. And I think the stress, like, my problem I have is trying to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, so for, I guess, all of our listeners who are entrepreneurs and they just feel like they don't have enough time in the day. Yeah. And they, they're dealing with stress and sometimes anxiety because when you're in business, you just can't control what's yep. going on. So many so, ebbs and flows. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what tips or what would you recommend? Yeah. So, um, like our client, my, me and my clients, we'll talk about creating systems like structure. Right. Um, and so that helps you to kind of like own your day mm -hmm. a little bit better. Okay. Um, because yeah, like in entrepreneurship, I mean, like you like never sleep, like, it's like, yeah. it's like dang, I just want to go to bed, you know, <laughs> but like your mind is just, just so many things going on. So mm -hmm. just creating systems, right. Getting help. Right. Cause yeah, I know yeah. some entrepreneurs, they, and I know sometimes it's a, it's a cost thing, right. That they don't want to hire an assistant or, you know, a web designer. They want to, build their own website, Everything. answer their calls. <laughs> I think that's my problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, outsource. Right. You want to outsource, you know, within your capacity. Right. So, yeah, so like, um, um, you know, developing structure systems, um, outsourcing. Right. Um, but then also right. having outlets. Right, right. Um, you know, like your wife just said, you know, I, I turn up, like I have <laughs> a great social life. Right. And that helps to pad the heaviness of, first of all, the, the, just the nature of my job, Oh yeah, oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then being an entrepreneur, just having a practice and having clinicians that work, right. you know, for you or under you. I, I hate that work with me. Right. Yeah. Right, you know, right. so it's tough, but I have my outlets too. Right. You know? Um, and I make time, I make time to sleep. Right. Like, you yes. Mean, you say you make time to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I make time to sleep. She's the second successful person that we talked about or that had on this, on this show that said, they sleep. They sleep. Yeah. That makes yeah, time to sleep. Yeah. yeah. So sleep is important. Sleep is important. If, if you want to be successful, you got to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and um, sleep is important for humans, not just entrepreneurs. <laughs> you know? Um, and so, yeah, when we're talking about in therapy with clients, I'm like, you know, how have you been sleeping? I ask that often. Right. You know? Right. And yeah, so if you have a challenge sleeping, I'm pretty sure you have challenges in life. Makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. So, yeah. Well, it, is there, besides loneliness, is there any other struggles that, like, how power you, you, your clients go through? Like, what, um, even concerning business, is there some type of... Yeah, I mean, stress. Oh, just stress? Yeah, okay. it is stress. Okay. Um, yeah, stress and just finding balance, trying to, like, have a normal life right. outside of an entrepreneurial life. Oh, normal, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's, you know... It's tough. And so just helping them to like strike a balance. Right. What are your uh, thoughts on work life balance? I mean, it's 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 essential. Okay. Like it's at the core of I think why I function like more optimally, because sometimes I don't feel like I'd be <laughs> at my best. <laughs> but it's because I, I have a balance. Um and my clients, I'm very transparent with my clients, and they know like these these are off days. <laughs> you know, if you have an emergency, we have like an emergency protocol. Right. But, you know, we can chat at your next session yeah. about, you know, your, your man getting on your nerves. Like, <laughs> we don't have to have an emergency session right on a Friday because I don't right. work Friday, sis. Right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, just striking a balance and just really prioritizing myself. Mm -hmm. And I've told all of my clients, like, this therapeutic relationship is very important to me. But I am the most important person. Yeah. Wow. And like, and like, even if they, sometimes they be like, hey, well, dang. But then they get it. Like, yeah. and you better be the most important person in your world. Wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's even if you're a mom or right. a wife. Right. Yeah. You know, because that spills over. If I don't treat myself well, that spills mm -hmm. over to my other Nothing relationships. That. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm like, you the most important person in your life. And baby, I'm the most important person in my life. Like yeah. I prioritize myself above it all. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to say that I'm selfish um, because I will make compromises here and there. But no, for the most part. Not not in the sake of your. Yeah, your I come love. I come first. And because that because of that, it helps me to help others. Right. You know, because I'm not pouring from an empty cup. I got to do a better job at that. I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I don't work life balance. Like, what is that? Well, yeah. that's my follow up question because you have some people that, like me, like I love what I do, right? Yeah. Right. I could yeah, do yeah, it yeah. all day long. Right. 
But so I, find, <laughs> I, I find happiness in it. I do. I know. I'm just shaking her head. I know, but I find happiness in it. So like, I look at things from a, from a, a work like integration. Okay. Like I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let it like consume my life and take a, mm-hmm. you know whatever. But at the same time, like it's my happy place. Okay. Too. What are your thoughts on that? Talk to me. Tell, <laughs> tell me I'm crazy. I know. I know. You don't. <laughs> well, I think too a little bit of that self awareness. Like, why is that your happy place oh. to work so? much into okay um and it's okay to enjoy your job yeah but it's okay to like want a break and need a break and uh, kind of se- create like a separation okay you know what i'm saying what if okay so cuz okay so here in it be more to do more we help leaders become who they need to become to do the <laughs> things they call, they call to, to do. do yeah right i like that i like that so mantra it's one of those things where it's like I'm put on this earth to help others and, and all, you know, that whole thing and, you know, impact people in a positive way. And I get the chance to do that through what I do. Okay. So walk me through it. Walk me through, <laughs> tell, me, tell me I'm crazy. <laughs> she, she's going to hit you with an invoice, man. No, right. no, no. So. But because I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of leaders that watch us that like, that's what they, like, they, they struggle with the, the balance of like, yeah, okay, I, doing I work, but, they, but they also, they're, they're doing it. Because they, that's what they love to do. Right. So, you know, it's, I think there's a lot of people, too, that they're trying to figure out what is it, what should it look like. Yeah, it's still balanced because, like, even, like, I think about Kobe Bryant, right? Mm. You know, rest in peace. Um, how, like, how much he loved basketball and how it was like an obsession for him as well. Yeah. Wow. And so in other areas of his life, you you know, a little bit of a deficit. Like, right. he was, like, socially awkward. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's just important to cultivate a variety of aspects of your life, okay? Yeah. And you can enjoy what you, <laughs> you, can, soul, huh? <laughs> you can enjoy what you do mm-hmm. and still like intentionally create breaks from it. Okay. Yeah. Um you know, cause yeah, because then it makes you weird. You know, it makes you yeah. weird. So <laughs> what you're telling me right now, what I'm hearing is that I'm an addict. Ooh. Possibly. Ooh. <laughs> and my I name think, is Tone and I'm an addict. Yeah. And I think um, like the term addicts, like, you know, has this connotation, like, okay, they're, you know, addicted to drugs. Right. <laughs> but the thing is, if you have an addictive personality that just gravitates to one thing and is just yeah. on it, on it, on it at the expense of right. other things, Family, right. Yeah. Family, yeah. friends, cause friends are very important. Right. Health, you know, wellness, it's an issue, even yeah. if it is Ooh. a job that you enjoy, oh right? Or if it's exercising, because people, some people get so obsessed with exercising, even though the exercising is a good thing, right? right. If that's all you do. That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anything, it, it, it just needs moderation, right? It needs balance. Oh, I got mm. chills, man. Because yeah. my dad told me a long time ago, he said that, I, you know, you, you, you knowing your son, he told me that, we have an, a, a, an, um, an addiction nature. Yep. And he said, he said, some may turn to drugs, some alcoholism, you know, and, and in my mind, at first it was we, you know, back in the day. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Putting it out there. Sure. But, but I noticed that I always find something to grab onto. Mm. So, so you saying that just, mm. yeah, I know, right? Okay. I know. Uh, yeah. So now I gotta really have therapy, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and unpack it. <laughs> but you know, one thing I one thing I learned though is is kind of being a leader, right? You gotta ask the right questions That's as true. well, mm-hmm. because like I can ask somebody, "Hey, how you doing today? Everything going right? Uh, fine." Yeah, but they'll say fine, right? But if I ask, "How's your mental health?" <laughs> it's a totally different conversation, right? right. It's a totally different. You know, so I do think that. So question for so so something we have here um, on Be More Do More is we have lyrics of the week. Lyric. Okay. Let's okay. go with it. So our <laughs> lyric of the week this week comes from Big Sean. OK. He says, what have you done for yourself? What have you done for your mental health? OK. Mm. When you hear that lyric, what comes to your mind? I think kind of like what I was just talking about. Right. <laughs> like what in what ways have you prioritized your wellness? Wow. And I'll ask my clients that, like, sometimes that, that'll be like a check-in, you know, um, share with me a way that you've prioritized your wellness this week. Mm-hmm. Um, some people, they say, you know, I took a bath, mm-hmm. like I soaked, or I went to the spa, or I read, mm-hmm. I read, mm-hmm. you know, I watch TV. Okay, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But just like really encouraging folks to 
prioritize your wellness. And that looks different from, you know, for different people. Right. You know, right. Um, but yeah. I usually have a scripture today, but <laughs> today I'm just really like, uh, <laughs> I'm going through something. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> just found out I'm an addict, man. So, <laughs> so okay, because we're talking about prioritizing yourself, right? Yeah. So me as an addict. <laughs> oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> How do you fight? So no, because there are things I like to do. Uh -huh. I like to read. I like to hang out by myself too. Like okay. uh, I haven't went to a movie movies in a while, but I like to do that. Yeah. But how do you fight that urge? To what? Work. Because I'm an addict. So right. Work. So that means you have to be intentional about not working. So when you find oh, yourself. Oh, you hear that word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself working, stop. And as mm. an entrepreneur, that that's that's what happens. Mm. You just can't stop. Wow. Right. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so there are days like when I'm like typing some therapy notes or like handling stuff for my clinician, I'm like, girl, wait, it's 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I will make myself shut the computer down. Oh, man. Because it's like these are not emergencies. Right. You know, it can wait. And so, yeah, just intentionality. How do you get that discipline? Because that takes a lot of discipline. Oh, it's tough. To it's tough. I mean, it's tough to break an addiction, yeah. right? Yeah. But you have to have intentions and you have to have support, she too. She said intentions again, bro. Yeah. She's intentional about it. So <laughs> yeah. that really, that okay, that's part of the scripture. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I got to find it. <laughs> because, and it, it's really, it's really, it's not weird. It's not a weird scripture, but it says, let me see, Genesis chapter one. Let me go to... God saw all that he had made and it was very good. No, no, that's not what I want to read. <laughs> but um, pretty much when he said that, um, oh, here you go. By the seventh day, God had finished the work and he had been, he had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Now, the importance <laughs> of rest if God rested, if God rested, he, dang, yeah. we had, because Come on. now, right yeah. in this scripture, it just showed me the necessity of rest and not only just rest. He, he meditated on what he'd done already. <laughs> he, he contemplated. Yeah. But if I'm constantly going and chasing that, addiction, how can you reflect? How can I reflect? Yeah. And how, if I can't reflect, I can't propel. Boom. Dang. <laughs> Just you just you just solved your own problem just like that. No, <laughs> which is which is why I love therapy. Yeah, because it's moments like that that happen all the time where people are listening to oh themselves. Oh my gosh! And they're like, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> we got us a therapist. I'd be boy. like, what? I ain't even have to say nothing. You <laughs> did it on your own. Just to, just building that self awareness. Yeah, we got us a therapist. So what about the people that are <laughs> self aware, but their habits? Still, you know, like, yeah. like you could be like, okay, I know I shouldn't cuss. And then something <laughs> happened and you just yeah. let it go. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, self-awareness doesn't stop like humanity. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I can be very aware, you know, in some BS, right. Yeah. Doing some, doing whatever I want, which again, you, you have to strike a balance. Right. So you want to have awareness, but you want to have accountability. Right. Or discipline. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a mixture, man. Yeah, it's a mixture. It's not just about being aware, um, you know, because I'm very aware, but I'm going to have me a Dr. Pepper every day. <laughs> 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 you know, maybe, you know, two or three, you know, right. right. You know, but I, I, you know, I have all the awareness, you right. know, right. You know, it's just, yeah, you got to have that discipline. You got to have that action. Yeah. You know. I, I find myself pretty aware, but I just had a moment. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and, and, and thanks to our therapist here, man. Like she, she did wonders. Just, I actually feel bad not paying you right now. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, we talked about, you know, some of the struggles that some of your clients may have. Yeah. Um, is there anything, let's, let's talk about the internet, right? Cause I did mention like, you know, some of the conversations on podcasts we might hear, <laughs> you know, have there any been, been a, a conversation that you have seen <laughs> on the internet that you just really wanted to say something so bad, you know, concerning your profession, you know, and yeah, yeah. So she got a whole list. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I really want to just open up the floor for you to just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just really go, go in, and I, I think that 
the internet, Al Gore's internet is a great place. Uh, Al Gore's <laughs> Walk us through that because I don't know what that means. I remember who Al Gore was, but I'm a 90s baby, so. Well, oh, you're 90s baby? Okay. No, no, okay. But yeah, it's just like, you know, the internet got like popular in the 90s and Al Gore was like the vice president. It's just like oh, a random yeah. thing. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. Um, the thing about the internet too is that, you know, it's open to everybody. Right. Mm-hmm their like listening, their perspectives and like their opinions. And I think that that trivializes my field where Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who say great things. Right, right. Who aren't therapists Mm -hmm. um, or like people who are therapists that say things that kind of align with people's, I guess, problematic behavior. They're like, oh, I'm going to do that. You know, the therapist on Instagram said blah, blah, blah. And so I think it just trivializes our profession right. um, to where everybody thinks that they're therapists. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And it's just, yeah, it just kind of makes our job a little challenging nah. um, because there's just so many opinions on the Internet and That's on true. social media. Um, and if somebody can give you an opinion that helps you to still do the BS that you're doing, right. that, that's that's what I want to listen to. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to, yeah, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I want to keep drinking Dr. Pepper. So if that therapist says, <laughs> you know, do what you want, blah, 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 you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. So that's BS, huh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and then another thing that I'm noticing, too, is that, like, um, a lot of clinicians – not a lot, but there are some therapists. Um, they like to be famous. Right. <laughs> so they say famous stuff. Yeah, them. like yeah. and they like they like that type of um popularity. And I just I think it clouds their like therapeutic judgment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. Right. I am one of the ones who probably hesitated going to <laughs> therapy because you know, I just won't the therapist to agree with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how do you how do you how do you give advice without making them feel hit? Well, oh, yeah. Well, the first thing is I don't give advice. Oh, okay. Oh. Really? I don't. Wait. She just on. no, 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 but she she just did she just did what she do on oh, me. Oh, yeah. Like real talk. Yeah. Like, it's just really like yeah. we just really had a therapy seat. Yeah. You see the emotions I dealt with over here, man? <laughs> like all the all the emotions I just went through. Yeah, I don't I don't give advice. Um I just I help develop insight. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you have to make your own decisions. Um Does that take discipline though? Like to cause to not give advice? Yeah. Or is, yeah. this, is this just such a part of your... Oh. Yeah, because sometimes I want to be like, girl... Just leave them. Girl. <laughs> and that's why I can't do couples therapy, because I'll be like, girl, come, girl, <laughs> come on. Come, st- really? St- stay one minute after. <laughs> Let him walk out. Stay one minute. Girl, leave him. Um, <laughs> wow. Like, I want to. Like, I want to tell my clients, hey, don't do that, or do this, and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But that that doesn't help the end game. Right. Because mm-hmm. yeah, the true. end game is that I want them to be self-sufficient. I want them to be insightful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Like all of yeah. that. And that just doesn't help. Now, some c- clinicians do, they give more advice. Mm. Um, I can give some recommendations, right? <laughs> right. You know, um, I can tell them maybe what I would do, right. but I'm so different from them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah. Man, that's dope. Well, it's kind of like how we talked about last podcast, like just us being ambitious mm-hmm. and just talking to people like how we would talk to us. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I'm real, like, bad at giving advice. <laughs> no, I'm not bad at giving advice, but I'm bad because I give it. It's yeah, you just give it, it, yeah. I just, you know, like... Yeah, because you want to problem solve. You want right. to just help people, I'm a, yeah. I'm a problem solver, so just to have that discipline to not do it... It's tough. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. And then kind of back to what he said um, about the, like, feeling hit. Mm-hmm. The truth is therapy is going to hit you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just got hit, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't... I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to feel good when you start to get more aware and just think about like some of your habits and just some mm. of your maybe lack of intentions or whatnot. Right. It's upsetting. Right. And yeah. like, and even in my inform, informed consent clause, like I tell clients that like, you might feel bad before you feel better. <laughs> you might feel worse. Right. Before you feel better. That's good. Yeah. Um, Did you but, lose a lot of people because of it? Is uh, that why you put it in your claws? Well, no, it's because, particularly because I work with black folks, I think sometimes that people don't have like a, like a full on uh, 
they have like a skewed perspective of what uh, therapy is. Right. And I don't want them to come in and think I'm about to be just, oh, yeah. oh <laughs> so sweet. Right, right. And I, no, I'd be like, you know, what you told me last week doesn't align with what you just did. So talk to me about. Don't you be calling me out. You know, so, so, like, just, so just talk to me a little bit about why you made that decision knowing right. that you wanted this outcome. Right, right. Ooh, be like, be like, ooh. <laughs> They'd be like, I'll I'll see you next week. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, so like, you're going to get hit. Um, And me as a therapist, like when I'm in therapy, I get hit even to this day. Wow, you take therapy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, just having like the rethink, like reframe things. I'm like, man, I did that all wrong. Uh, Right, right. You know, but I'm grateful. I'm in the space where I'm grateful where. I don't feel offended right? Yeah. because my awareness has developed. And I'm like, you know what? I needed that. I'm yeah. learning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting and better. so it, it, it's, it, therapy is a process because people will come to therapy, expect it to be super sweet, expect it to get their problems fixed right. within a, within two sessions. Mm-hmm. Right. I'd be like, you're 50 years old. <laughs> You've been living this way for five decades. Right. <laughs> two sessions with me doesn't change. True. Right. right. All of that. Right. 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 And all those ecological factors that like, you know, make a person who they are, family, finances, all of that. So, so I got a question on Gen Z and like the new, <laughs> the new people that's coming up, right? Because it's, they're different from how we we grew up. It was you do what I tell you to do, yeah. and that's it, right? Now it's they want more relationship relation relations with their you know boss. They want um, to feel satisfied. They want to, yeah. you know. So I guess like how do you because. And, and knowing that, because again, we, listen, we have a lot of leaders that listen to us and a lot of entrepreneurs that are leading teams. How do they, I guess, how do they um, lead? And because they, they are tied in the outcome, because if this person is not successful, like they want to give the advice. How do you get the advice or how do you not give the advice and still get the result that you want? Because at the end of the day, this generation wants to feel close to their leader. Yeah. Um, I think the word that sticks out again is like balance. Mm -hmm. And so helping like whoever you're leading to feel like valued, but Mm -hmm. feel accountable. Right. And I think that's a tough balance to strike, Mm -hmm. um, but it's necessary when you're running a business and it's really hard with Gen Z because as soon as you upset them, they want (laughs) to quit. (laughs) And so again, I think, like teaching them balance as well. Like everything's not going to feel good. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's nothing about the internet. It makes it like, it kind of like empowers them to like not be accountable at all. Oh yeah. Um, yep. Cause they'd be like, you know, if your boss don't, you know, do this, then just quit. What? <laughs> if, if, if you're, if you're supposed to be to work at 9am and you show up at nine 30, that's right. That's an infraction. Right. right. You know true. what I'm saying? But as the leader, you know, you can be a little flexible, right. Mm-hmm. You know, allowing, you know, staff to work from home or, you know, giving them a little flexibility when they show up. So it's just really about finding balance. Right. Um, and it just looks different from field to field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My clinicians, they have a lot of flexibility. Um, and I've even, they love you, don't they? They, 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 they do. They do. <laughs> she sound like a cool <laughs> boss. I want to come over to you. I want to work for you. Like, no, like I have a very good relationship with my clinicians, but I also treat them like people. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, like humans. True. And I treat them the way that I wish that I was treated as like an emerging clinician. Um, but I also hold them accountable, mm. you know, um, but in my cool way. Yeah, makes sense. I'm trying not to talk down to them. Um, and I remember when I hired my first clinician and she called me, she wanted to talk to me and she had told me that she felt like I was micromanaging her. When I tell you I was crushed, because I'm like, oh my God, right. I never want to be a kind of boss. Right. Like, right. When I got the phone with her, I cried. Yeah. I was so hurt. But then I like circled back and I'm like, you know what? You're treating her like that because you don't even trust yourself as a boss. Oh, man. So a lot of self-reflection Ooh. has to happen, too. When you're a leader, you have to really, you know, come to terms with how are you leading? Like, yeah, like are, are your ducks in a row? And I recognized that because I was brand new to private practice, my ducks was all over the place. I had ducks <laughs> in the pond, in the house. <laughs> and so because of that, it trickled down into how I treat her because I'm mm. like, my stuff ain't together. I'm going to make sure your stuff together, you right, know? Right. And so I just, yeah. But again, we had that kind of rapport. That's true. Yeah. That's Yeah. So yeah. And just imagine if she didn't feel comfortable enough to have that conversation. Yeah. 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 But she did though. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a big thing because yeah. she felt comfortable with yeah. it. Yeah. But that is the culture that I cultivate at the up center. Like that's, 
because that's what I needed coming up. Right, like as right. a as like an emerging clinician, just more support. Like I had to get my stuff out in the mud. Okay. Right, right. And I just don't want that for my clinicians. I want them to have an easy life. Right. Yeah. Um, because that helps them to be better therapists. That's true. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. your whole life is in disarray, how can I expect you to show up for the people that we serve right. in a good way? So Right. Yeah. Man, that that's the the part that she felt open to come to you lets me know that she know that she could. Yeah. And, and granted, she probably was a little scared. I mean, that's a scary conversation. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody to sign your paycheck, she'd be like, hey, like, <laughs> hey, back up off me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I always, from the beginning, I'm like, just keep it real with me. Mm -hmm. If I've said something that offends you, because I am very blunt. Right. Mm -hmm. I am very <laughs> straightforward. Direct, you know, okay. Yeah. It's like, or something, if there's like a system in place that is like counterproductive to you doing well, like talk to me. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, you know, sometimes I think they'd be a little too comfortable. I'd be like, all right, all right. I, ain't changed, I, I ain't changed Get that out. now. But, but I'm just glad that I have created that space for them. Right. And I've just prayed that I can continue to be that kind of leader um, because it does take work. Because there are right. times when I might do want to go off a little. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'd be like, no, because you don't want nobody talking to you like that. See, you, you, you're you saying a lot of key things. Number one, you're saying that, like, the key thing you said is that you probably was micromanaging because your ducks probably yeah, wasn't yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that lets me know that as a leader, you need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> you need therapy. Yeah, you yeah. got to get just a soul. If, if, if you see, like, chaos is going on in your workplace, I can't say that it's all of you, mm -hmm. but maybe it's a reflection of what's going on with yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or just, but, like, you know, lack of systems, right? right. Lack of consistency. Right. You know, I mean, it trickles down. That's true. Like any whack place I've ever worked. <laughs> it was the manager. Okay. <laughs> leadership. No. leadership. 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 You know, even right. when I was a school counselor, sorry, principals. Right. AP, sorry, assistant principals. It trickled down. See, I, was, I wanted to ask about that. Like when you first said it, he was like, yeah, I can't do children no more. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I didn't know how. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, now, granted, I love being a school counselor. I love the actual work. But mm. I just like working with adults, like yeah. just super aware. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. People like that understand sarcasm because I'm very sarcastic. Right. Um, they're just older. Right. You know, just adults. Is it, is, it, is it a challenge for you too? Maybe? <laughs> kind of? <laughs> Think it is? <laughs> the bigger shit now? <laughs> Not really? Oh, I mean, she fire. We, we, ain't <laughs> she fire. I mean, it's all challenging at times. Right. Let me just say that. Okay. But, so know. one of my final questions is the person that you are, because again, we, we help, to come, help people become the person you need to become to do the things you're called to do. The person you are has gotten you to this point right now. Yes. Who do you need to become to get to your next level? I don't know. I do feel like I need to become more disciplined. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I also need to finish this doctorate. So that I, <laughs> because I, I feel like the doctorate just causes me stress. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Do you need it though? No, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. I, I do well without it, yeah, but right. I'm just too deep in now right. to stop because I'm in dissertation. But um, so, yeah, come, getting out of school and then becoming more disciplined, um, excuse me, and then also more knowledgeable mm -hmm. about business um, as it pertains to like taxes oh, yeah. and like running like a healthcare type yeah. profession. Right. You know, it's a lot of things that I did not know which was why another reason why I was micromanaging my first clinician. Because I was like, girl, look, we were all confused over here. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So just even like becoming more knowledgeable just right. about being a business owner. Um, but yeah, you know, I'll get there, yeah, you know. Right, right. Um, Because I start, you know, I started dry. Like I, I just went out on a whim. It was like the pandemic. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and make this thing shake, mm -hmm. you know. And I just, and yeah, I just learned from mistakes, experience, like... Did you have a coach at all? Like, did you... I have one now. Okay. But back then, I was like, look, I so just think... So you have a business coach? Yes. I, so I have a business consultant. Okay. So um, her and I get together once a month, and we just talk about business stuff. Another black woman. Okay. Dr. Christy Holloway. Shout out. Um, yes. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, she just helps and supports me, um, which is nothing goes back to, like, what I'm talking about gatekeeping, is that, like, she... She does her own thing. Like mm, she, right. 
she has, I don't know, she has a bunch of clinicians, like <laughs> big buildings, everything. Like she's not worried about me. Yeah, right. Taking nothing from her. And that's the kind of the perspective that I have. That's like, what's up. Is that whatever is mine is for me. Yeah. Like I like function from like this perspective of abundance that is abundance. I like that. You I like know, that. like I'm like never because no one's like me. Right. I am a different type of person. Yeah, right? I always just talked about that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I am a different type of black girl. Right. Like I have a different type of experience. And if somebody, if a client is for me, they're for me or my clinicians, it'll work. And if it doesn't, mm -hmm. so, so be it. yeah, yeah. Right. Somebody else will come and need services and we'll be fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Ms. Bratia, Bratia <laughs> Codwell, <laughs> we want to, we want you to let the people know where can they come and get therapy at? Okay. And you know, and how can they reach you? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we are the up center. We are located like near downtown, downtown Decatur off of Claremont Avenue. We see in person and virtual, um, our website is upcentercounseling.com. And, uh, we have, Four clinicians total and then one intern. Our intern sees people for free or reduced right. rate for those who are having some financial uh, differences. Um, and then we accept insurance, too. So, right. Yeah. And then I offer supervision. So um, anybody looking to get licensed yeah. in the state of Georgia, get their LPC so they can do what I do. I am here to support. So, okay. Yeah. Do you have I, to have a psychology degree to do this or? No, I'm a master's in counseling. Okay. Uh -huh. So can I just come directly to you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just had an, an epiphany today. And I was just about to say too, we actually have a black male clinician um, on our staff too. Okay. And I know that sometimes that is a barrier mm -hmm. for individuals to seek therapy. So yeah, we have a black male, super cool. All my clinicians are super cool. We're super casual. You know, we wear sneaks, you know, we, oh, okay. you know, I we, rock with that. yeah, we very, we keep it very casual. Okay. Um, you know, keep the vibes authentic so that people yeah. can really be themselves. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And any last word for the people? Um, no, this was fun, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's real cool. You know, I, I'm kind of like anti-podcast. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like man, these cats need to stop talking on, oh, on the man. internet. But no, this was fun. And I just appreciate the platform. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, mental wellness is very important, particularly for our community. Definitely. Um, and I just think the more we talk about it, the more we like normalize it and remove the stigma, the more well we right. could be. Right. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Well, you guys be sure to like, share, subscribe to this information. Hit the bell. Hit the bell, Hit the bell man. Y'all just heard it. Y'all look, <laughs> look. We just had therapy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all better share this, man, and, and get this information out of here, man. Uh, any last words, brother? I'm good, man. We I, good. I really appreciate you coming in. Yeah, we definitely it. do. Take yeah, a lot out of it. Hit dog a holler. I'm hollering right now. <laughs> Not nah, good, dog. I love, okay. I love accountability. I love um, becoming better. Um, and you, I think today you made everybody that's watching this. Yeah, better. Definitely. No problem. And same here, likewise. Thank you I for just having had, me. Like I said, I just had a revelation. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good to go now. I, I, I'm I'm a recovery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in okay, recovery. Okay, right now. Okay. <laughs> but y'all give it up for Brentia Cotwell, man. She did an awesome job. We appreciate you again. And thank uh, you. Thank you. Anything else, bro? Sit. All right, right. we out. Up, but you concerned about it. Stick and move. We can get it done. Call it unity. It ain't no way around it. Cultivating. We get motivation from the big guy. We don't play about him. Going hard for the game. Showing love. I don't tolerate.